All right, so got the drone here. Just uh, not set up or anything. Just powered up. Gonna have my phone for the drone now, um, just so I can record my screen and walk you through the settings app and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just going to, I believe I have it open, yep. So I'm just gonna go here. No vehicle connected, oh that's, turn on your Wi-Fi. So, Wi-Fi is up, connecting right now. Just gonna make sure that I'm in the shop. All right. All right, so I've taken you through just the basic controls, basic flight, um, setting it up, unboxing it, stuff like that. Um, then I took you back out here and uh, just did a little run around through the land, back out here, just the cornfield, um, showed you how to fly it, what things meant, and then I've also gone over the GoPro and how to get your footage, how to watch it, edit it, share it, view it, just just some basics on that, some some little tips. Um, so now uh, I'm going to record my screen while I actually go through the the 3DR Solo app, and that's the app that you need to launch and connect to the controller, which connects. To the drone um, so we're just gonna go into the settings here you can log in and make an account if you want you don't need to um, the solo name and the Wi-Fi um, this is mine right now and as you can tell in the in the Wi-Fi settings that's also what we connected to um, the controller style you have your different modes throttle on the right or the left um, your performance Right now, flight's at medium. You can speed it up or slow it down. Camera pan is at slow. Um, if you're flying it to just fly, you might want to turn the, the flight modes up and the camera pan up. But if you're taking it for video, that's why slower is always better. Windier days as well, slower is always better. better. Um, <clears throat> and when you're just learning, you might even want to slow, slow down it as well. Um, your altitude limit, um, this firmware on here locks you at 400 feet, capable of a lot more, that's just, um, that's just what they limited to you. And then you have your preset A and B, um, you have your cable cam or orbit or fly. Um, and then down here, again, same three options. Um, and what that actually is, and I'm going to show you here. That's actually talking about these two options right here. Um, and then on the back of the here, you'll have some more. Right here, you have your camera angle. And this goes up or down. And that tilts the three-axis gimbal up or down. And then you have your angle presets. And that down here or up here, I think right now it's at 90 degrees and at zero degrees. And then this is how you can go in between that as well. Don't really use this too much. Rely more on this and then just turning the GoPro, or the, turning the drone itself. Um, so you have the pause the solo, that will stop it in flight, let it hover. You have your return to home if you want it to just come back on its own. Um, hold the power up, usually tap, then tap again, but hold. Fly, hold it, and you'll watch the little banner go across the screen. And on propellers, or GoPro or anything else on it right now. This is just to go through the app and the controller. Um, but so that that's it for the solo. Um, return home. You have your return home altitude. Goes all the way up to 400. Goes all the way down to zero. Um, I usually recommend setting it high, just because if connection's lost, so the battery gets low. No matter where you're going to be at. Um, once that's done, that's where the drone's gonna go. So, like right here, I could easily put it at 20, 30, 40 feet. Problem is, is if I'm past those trees back there, and this is the path it's taking, 
it's not going to see those trees. It's going to fly right into them. And there's a lot of different circumstances like that. There could be telephone lines. There could be a lot of things. So whatever, if I'm just going back here, I'm just, I'm going to take a 360 from here, kind of judge and overshoot what the tallest thing is. Now you can't see it, but there's a huge telephone pole over there. I'd say at least 150 feet tall. So if I was flying here, I'd set it for 210 feet. Or you could type it in, but I'm going to say 210. Good thing to do. After reaching home, you can have it either land or you can have it hover. Um, hover is probably a good choice. I usually prefer land because if it's returning home due to battery, I'm not trying to play the battery game and have it run at zero and just die while it's flying. Like I'd rather have it just land. One thing to note though, is that if it ever does go into return to home mode, whether you prompted it, it's a controller losing reception, and in some situations battery, um, once it regains control again, like once, if it's connection, once it regains that connection, you can cancel that return to home by flying. By touching the joysticks and moving them, you can then take control again. If it's coming home due to battery, it it kind of knows how much battery it roughly needs to take to take it from whatever distance it is from home and make it home. Sometimes you'll get your prompt at 25%. Sometimes it thinks that 25, it's gonna need that 20, 15% or something to get home. So it's not even gonna let you do anything. It's just gonna come home. Sometimes if I'm just flying around here, let's say perhaps I'm just over at those trees, you know, I'll have it back in less than a minute. At 25% comes, it, you know, vibrates the controller, which is nice feedback and it also prompts you on the little screen battery low 25% and then it'll prompt you again at 15 and then probably around 10% it's gonna take you home um, so that's why I prefer land just because it's a good spot to be um, return to launch or me again me is probably a good thing me means this controller so let's say I launched it over here but by the time I need to land it, I'm, you know, 50 feet that way or another. Um, that might be a good situation to have it go to the controller. Um, but sometimes if I am 50 feet away or if I'm chasing it down to remain, to keep my eye of sight with it, you know, I still want it to go where I, I launched it from. Like usually when I launch, that's the most thought I put into. As far as the surroundings, any wind, any way it's going to hover left or right, the launch point is the most important point to me to maintain some free range for the drone. Um, where I'm standing when the controller breaks communication or when the battery goes low, like that's just where I am temporarily. Obviously I've moved from launch, so it might not be ideal at all to have it land there. So that's why I leave mine on launch. Um, again, that's up to you, but that's just a little description on those. Um, you have your re rewind and rewind distance. This is one of the advanced modes, and it will fly back to the way it came. Um, you can also do your updates from right here. Uh, units, Imperial, Metric, um, voice alerts. I recommend enabled. They are annoying, but I mean, if you're trying to fly and maintain visual on the aircraft, make sure your video is going good. Like, I don't have a lot of time to stop and pause and try and find out what. Was the warning up here on the screen? Is it down here? Like, the audio is nice. It's annoying, yes, but it's nice to have. Um, and then you have your advanced flight modes. You have to enable them. And from there, you just go here. But one thing you lose with the advanced is the GPS, which means you return to home. Controller breaks, it's just going to sit there and do whatever it was doing. Um, you don't have pause. What happens if you're getting close? You just don't know what to do. Like, something's happening quick or something personally happened to you and you have to pause a minute from flying the drone to take care of, you know, uh, your pants are on fire or like your kid's doing something, like being able to just pause it and know it's just gonna hover, like that's great. Um, so advanced modes really, it, it just lets you fly faster. It's more like for racing or just having fun, but you lose a lot of the, the ease of use on stuff and a lot of the things that are very important to me. Um, so I always have it off, always. Um, and then, so we're just going to go into fly, fly.
fly solo. So inside the app itself now, and we don't have the GoPro, so there's not gonna be any footage, and I'm not gonna be able to tweak the footage at all. But uh, be able to show you here, you have your movie mode, your resolution, like you can change the stuff right now, it's configured, well it was, there, to the Hero 4 Silver. Um, save the camera roll on or off. Now this is really cool. Um, you have it on and it's gonna eat up your memory and you're gonna lose a little bit of range just because the Wi-Fi signal that was just for navigation is now for navigation and streaming video. I think it streams at like 720p, so it's not full 1080, and plus the top bars, like all the GoPro stuff is also on that, but it records the video to your phone as well. So it's nice to have after something, you just wanna, like you don't wanna have to put the memory card in or save or download the video, like you can just watch it straight off your tablet or your phone. <clears throat> not high quality, but it gives you a gist, like hey, did I get the shots I needed? Do I need to put it back up? Do I need to, you know, charge up a battery, swap it out and go back up and get something? Just, uh, how did it do? Just, it's really, really nice. Um, so I usually leave it on, and then that way, at the very least, like I have two copies of my footage. I have one that I can show somebody right then and there, and then I also have one that was taken on the GoPro that is either 1080p or it's 4K or it's 2.5K or, you know, it's higher quality, higher frame rates, and, um, just a lot better footage and that's the stuff that I edit with that's the stuff that I provide customers that's the stuff that gets uploaded um, but the cool stuff to just show at the party or just show the people hey these are the angles I got like no it's not crystal clear it will be but this is just hey is this everything that you wanted just make sure before you leave before you wrap things up and put away the drone like make sure you got the shots you need that's the most important thing um, so but well, that's just the biggest things here um, and that's inside here. If I had the GoPro, it would everything else would be white. But for the most part, that's that's it. Um, you'll have your cautions and stuff like that up here. Like right now, I shouldn't be flying. And then a few red areas, depending what the the problem is. Uh, I think it told me that there's a airfield close by. But I mean, that's one good thing to know as well. Like, are you gonna get in trouble for flying? Do you have do you have flight restrictions? Do you have to fly above 80 feet? Do you have to fly above 100 feet? Do you have to fly below 200 feet? Can you fly up to your three or 400 feet mark? Like they're just good things to know. Um, and planning, planning what you can do, planning your route. And that way you don't have cops showing up. That way you don't post the video and the next thing you know, the FFA is on your butt about something, so. But I hope this was helpful. And again, if you still need me to break things down more want more advanced tips, want me to show you something else, just put it down in the comments or email me. Um, in the description of the video, I'll put my website, my email, and any other contact information as well. Um, I hope you appreciate the footage and the quick tips, I guess you could call it. Um, hope it was helpful. And um, yeah, I hope you go out, enjoy flying. Uh, if you do capture some great stuff, you know, feel free to tag me in it. I'd love to see what you're doing with it. So, all right, but thanks again.